Pictures by Andrew Buckle. Well, actually, it's a combination of Painter and Photoshop. Basically, I'm going to do, just going to go over to Painter, and Painter's got a whole range of different features, Painter 2015, as well as previous versions of Painter. And in particular, I'm just going to go for the patterns. Uh, patterns, it creates a, a range of, one thing that Photoshop doesn't have, there's no real sort of auto-generator of patterns, uh, fractal patterns anyway. So, now, window, and media control panels and patterns. If you can't actually see this little panel, very tiny, tiny panel. And just gonna to go to the right side there and you'll see there, make fractal pattern. So just click that and that's the default. Unfortunately, the preview is fairly fairly small. I wish they would actually extend that a bit, make it a bit more, a bit more. There's quite a bit of space underneath. They could at least fit it out. It's basically been the same since Painter 3 or whatever, Painter 2, I expect even, maybe even there all the way back. Okay, so you can modify the power, so you can sort of see different sort of fractal patterns there, just, just modify that, and you can make it more of a cloud, more very, you can see the very, very fine detail there. Also, you can modify the feature size, change that, and again, just reduce the power, modify, again, you can see just a whole range of different uh, fractal patterns. Softness, you can modify as well, and angle. Well, angle doesn't really do much. I mean, you can see obviously, but it doesn't actually change the sort of obviously the angle. You see it as you move around. You just, of course, if you did it subtly, I'm certain that it would. Obviously, the actual thing just recalculates its pattern. So it, it doesn't really look, have much effect when, but if you go for thinness, if you actually reduce the thinness, now, if you've got the thinness there, you can actually see that by changing the angle, you can actually move it around. So. That does have an effect. Also, you can modify the size. But I'm not going to go for that particular pattern. I'm just going to go for a more rough pattern. So there's a, a nice pattern there. There's also channels. So there's a, a, some variation you can have there. Surface, normal, gradient bearing, and height. I'm just going to go for that one because I want a grayscale. So click OK. Then it generates that. And what I'm going to do now, because I want to use it in Photoshop, so I'm just going to save it as a PST file. So save as, and I'm just going to save it not as a RIF, because RIF unfortunately cannot be read in Photoshop. It would be nice if it was supported, but I'm just going to save it. Right, once you've actually saved it, now go back to Photoshop, back to Photoshop, and obviously filter. Well, you could open it, of course. You could use it as a pattern. You don't have to actually use it as a displacement or glass. There's a, there's a number of options you can use, like distort, displace. But I'm going to go to filter gallery. So filter gallery. Now, that was an earlier one. It's actually got, uh, was one of the, the fractal patterns. But you can, of course, just to load it, you've got all the various options there. But right side menu and load texture. And I'm just going to go for the one.psd file that I created earlier. And there's the actual thing. That's a seamless design, so you can uh, change the distortion, smoothness, and you can modify the scaling as well. Right, there it is. Great source of wonderful, interesting displacement maps as well as patterns for use in Photoshop, obviously combining with uh, Painter. If you've got both applications, it's a really great source of material for, and obviously you can use stuff that you create in Photoshop and use that in Painter. I always think it's nice to have two or three different applications that you can sort of bounce ideas off. I hope you found this tutorial 